Juntos a ese que moment supreme the Holy Ghost. Let's thank the Father for bringing us here in this moment because we know He has a purpose because all our steps are divinely ordained by Him. Let's thank Him for the word that's coming to us today. Thank Him because our lives are transformed. Thank Him because we never remain the same. Thank Him for everything He says to do here tonight. Sing 
adored and testifies. Ah, 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 ah. From now till the end of time, ah, you'll sing, we will testify that you were good and you were kind. Ah, So we say you are good. Hallelujah, you are good. Oh, you are good, you are good. You are, you are. You are good, always good. Oh, you are good. One more time, we testify that you are. You're always good. Give him thanks with the fruit of your lips. Singing understanding, singing the spirit. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for finding us in love. And you won from the beginning to the end. Oh, oh, oh. We are seated in you and forever we reign in Christ. Ah, 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 ah.
Let's take out the next two minutes and just pray in the Holy Ghost this evening. Prado koshane manto pradege de baba hasus to brenege di baba manando supregi di bahasa. Lebrege de lebron do kozi zivrege di manando sus to preke thele vado do sus to preke thina mandos. Ranamando subrina gada bahardi de sekonde la frege di de brahates. Mando lo croti zizi vene mende le kusi subrege di mini mando subrena nandos. Oh, Ranamanda, she cloned the Labati, Sibrin and Amanda, Sobran Amanda, Lega the Balabananda, Subrina Nanantas Capra de Hilego Satava Hassi, Mambrugo do Bamondo, Subrina Gatti, Ligo Brondo Logobo, Subregeti Laba. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, we give you praise, Mananamondo, Subragata, Barato, Sikatai, Nanante, Liko, Subregedele Bahasa, Ragada Baba 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 the Kaha. The Bible says he that prays in a known tongue that defies himself. I want us to yield our tongues unto edification tonight. In the name of Jesus. Yield your tongue unto edification, unto personal edification tonight. And as you do, the fallow ground of your heart is broken, and you'll be able to receive the engrafted word of the Lord with meekness. In the name of and with faith in your heart. Eko pondo sombre ge dele bokosata. Eko prondo sombro do lo bokondo sombro go do lo bokondo sombre ge dele bokondo. Ligo do bro go do 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 malo do 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 bro go do 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 bro go do baha. A sonda la do bro go do la brando do sonda don 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 do bro go do la ba 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 da maha. Ratata nikotonda sekonda la brakatasa. Pray the Holy Ghost somebody here. Manto proto sombro do lo bro go do bro go do bro go do ba ba da ba lo bokosata. Ligo do sande. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you. Um, may we just rise as we read the word of God in honor of the word. Let's rise to our feet. Or let's remain standing as we just read the word of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. John chapter 14, we take just three verses and we read together in concert. John chapter 14, three verses together in concert. Um, praise God. Whew. Glory to Jesus. Wow, glory to Jesus. John 14 from verse 16 to 18. Are we ready? One, two, go. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you because the entrance of your word brings light and gives understanding to the simple. Father, we thank you because as we camp around your word tonight, there will be illumination, there will be corrections, there will be rebuke, there will be reproof, there will be instructions in righteousness, there will be impartations and encounters of the God kind. Thank you, Father, because the same anointing upon the preacher to preach is upon the year as to year, to the end that there is mutual edification. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please have your seat in God's presence. Glory to God. All right, so... Um, Tonight, I want to teach or preach, depending on the flow of the anointing, um, on what I've titled Divine Help and Interventions. Praise God. It's going to be a very brief um, service tonight. We want to talk about divine help and interventions. Praise God forevermore. Um, you see, the Bible is filled with several um, stories and narratives about how God steps into the affairs of men 
um, the Bible is clear that every now and then God would always step into the affairs of his people bringing them help and divine intervention matter of fact in the 17th verse of the fourth chapter of the book of Daniel the Bible clearly says that God is the God that rules in the affairs of men praise God forevermore what that means is that as much as um, in theology we call there's a concept in theology that we call the lease of Adam what that means is that as far as this earth realm is concerned, man is in charge. Are you following me? As far as this earth realm is concerned, man is in charge. However, the scripture and indeed contemporary history shows us very clearly that even though man is in charge upon the surface of the earth, God, out of the goodness of his heart, will always intervene and interfere in the affairs of men. Especially as it concerns his own hallelujah one of the things that we see and notice about the character of god in scripture is that god is jealous about his own matter of fact we can say very categorically that we are god's investment upon the earth how many of you have invested in a business before how many of you did mmm <laughs> okay um, um, two years ago there was this forex wave around how many of you did forex and invested and some people took took your money and ran away <laughs> they say it has crashed praise god forevermore you see when you are invested in a business you are concerned about that business for those of you that have um for, for elderly people that used to invest in stock and in the stock market and buy you know buy shares in companies like leventis uac and all of those companies you will see that they would always watch the network news at 10. how many of you remember your parents the older generation they will always work the network news at 10 to see did unilever then it was called lever brothers the lever brothers increase or decrease it's not like they love the management of Lever Brothers. It is because their money has been invested in the company. What that means is that when you have interests, when you have interest in the company, you are looking for the overall welfare of that company. Let me say this. The child of God is God's company on earth. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to do well because you are, invest, you are his investment glory to jesus you are is another another way I, I like to put it is that you are god's showpiece glory to jesus when god wants to brag when god wants to talk about how good and how awesome and how powerful he is to other people he will say look at my son are you following what i'm saying here so because we are god's investment we are god's showpiece god is interested in bringing us divine help hallelujah god is interested he, many times we might not see it glory to jesus we might not see it we might not know it but there's an unseen hand of god consistently working in our affairs to do us good hallelujah one of the things that i think is the greatest blessing that human beings have is the fact that um, I call it the principle of anonymity we don't know many things that are happening you don't know the many battles that god has won for you hallelujah you don't know how many good things have come to you on account of your faith hallelujah you don't know how many battles god had averted for you you don't know how many blessings that god has brought your way you know uh, recently we had an experience myself and my wife she had submitted um she, she was supposed she's supposed to write an exam very soon and she had submitted her papers and all of that and interestingly there was a particular for medical people you understand there was a particular posting that she did and she was supposed to put in you know the form she was feeling and she forgot and then we received the call that sunday afternoon and the man introduced himself apparently one of our examiners and said that did you do this particular posting and she said yes say how come he's not in your form I'm supposed to collate the names of the candidates qualified for exams tonight and because you did not put it your, your name is not supposed to be there but did you actually do it i said ah, sir, i did it i don't know how i didn't do it i didn't put it on it and she said okay who is your trainer she mentioned the name of one of our senior um 
seniors in the hospital and then he said okay tell the person to call me and then they actually put her name on the exam list without submitting all the requirements and then she had to now send it personally to the examiner later and then we're talking about it i said that must have been an angel do you know how many candidates this man was supposed to screen do you think that he just has that time to say that ah, everybody must qualify in fact if you know the nature of nigerian examiners their joy is that people are failing so you see that and the, the issue is how could we have known we had no idea the man was probably in lagos or Ibadan somewhere and we're here in Ubumusho. we had no idea that there was a mistake in the forms that she filled listen god is interested in your progress hallelujah there are many things we, we would not have known there are many things that god does on your behalf causing you to meet the right people at the right time causing you to be in the right places at the right time causing you you know barako shatabana somebody shared a story and a testimony with us um a few years ago how that he was traveling from Jos to abuja now i'm not i'm not saying this to you know um um claim that we are better than some people that have unfortunate incidents incidences but this young man believer pray pray prayer man was traveling from just to abuja and then he got to this park and he sat down in the bus and then something ensued between him and the bus driver and the bus driver says you cannot follow us again get down from my bus and he said that he started cursing you know when a born again christian is cursing see like like i'm not going to leave this bus you know boom, boom, and then they were fighting he said they fought for almost 30 minutes. he said he must enter this bus i said mm -mm. not be my boss you go enter you go follow next turn. and they fought eventually when he entered the next turn, one high into the trip he realized that that bus had an accident and almost everybody was dead now somebody will have said that you know this the testimony will have been sweeter even when he got to the park the holy ghost said don't enter and he just said yeah thank you lord and then he waited for the next one but this one he was fighting you imagine how that god can use a donkey to preserve a prophet are you following what i'm talking to you about how that god can use a donkey god can the guy said it, his discernment was off he did not know god was preventing him listen when we are walking into ditches when we are walking into evil it will be as though we are climbing a mountain it will be hard the zeal of the lord will prevent us from entering into evil it's one of the systems of god's help have you caught for for young ladies have you caught feelings for a guy before and you're liking the guy giving the guy all the green lights it looks like your spec but it's not just looking your way are you following what i'm talking to you about it's not just looking it's not looking at your direction you're wondering but i sat down but I'm, I'm, I'm in prayer I'm away. why only for you to realize that he's an abusive person and that while you were busy catching feelings the lord was the one preventing him from looking your way so that he can preserve you from evil what am i trying to say tonight i'm trying to say that god is intentional about your life are you following what i'm saying tonight god is intentional daniel in 4 verse 17 says is the god that rules in the affairs of men many times it's god's unseen hands that is orchestrating events on our behalf you know one of the things that i've noticed is that many times it's by the benefit of hindsight that we know what god is doing glory to jesus is when events are passed and then we are thinking back at our lives we now realize oh so god this was you it didn't make sense at the time i was going through it but it was you it didn't look good at the time i was going through that situation but it was you it was you working patience in me it was you giving me an experience that was going to be useful in my future but i didn't know i thought that i was struggling through life hallelujah Listen, many Christians have blamed God for his blessings. Because at the time they were going through it, it didn't look like blessing. It looked like, why is everybody going forward? Hallelujah. Promises abound in scriptures about God's capacity and willingness to bring help to his own people. I'm talking about divine help and interventions. 
Glory to Jesus. Promises are bound in scriptures about God's capacity and willingness to bring help to his people. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 13, the Bible says, The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. You know, one of the things that humbles my heart in scriptures is how God always takes my side. Glory to Jesus. Listen, God is always on your side. Say, God is always on my side. He will rebuke you, He will reprove you. If you do anyhow, you'll get koboko, but He's always on your side. Hallelujah. You know, one of the stories that amazes me about God and his interactions with his people is that man, Abraham. You know why he amazes me? Abraham will go down to Egypt and lie. Do you understand? He went to Egypt and said, Sarah, actually, it was a lie and it was not a lie. By family tree, Sarah was kind of his sister. But this time, she was his wife. And then he will go to Egypt and tell the Egyptian king that this is my sister so that they will not kill me. Guess what happens next? <laughs> God leaves Abraham. So the king takes Sarah and puts, him in, puts Sarah in his harem waiting for the time he will be able to go into her. And God will leave the man that lies. Ah, such a beautiful thing to be in covenant with Jehovah. And goes to meet the one that was just liking fine woman and says you're supposed to have died i will have killed you see the man you took his wife is actually a prophet go and meet him so that he can bless you and return his and abraham would become rich by lying now am i preaching lying here yeah? amen you understand that that's a different dispensation glory to jesus so believers today don't have to lie amen but you see that my point is that god does not alamanko sita brother gahai god is not a betrayer he's not your brother he's not your sister he's not that girl that you like he is god and when god is in covenant with you he's always on your side hallelujah it says the lord will fight for me and i will hold my peace one of the scriptures that i love so much the bible says the lord is with me as a mighty terrible one so it means that in my journey of life when life begins to ask me questions there's somebody who is with me and the bible says that he's with me as a mighty terrible man listen people of god if you understand how much god is jealous concerning you when people begin to misbehave towards you you will run into your closet and be praying mercy hallelujah when when people just start to pick up on up on you at work in school and in all of those places and then you begin to when you if you understand this revelation of divine help and intervention what you will do is you'll be praying mercy for them because they are kicking hard against the rock when somebody decides and says that she, he wants to make an enemy out of a believer he's kicking against the rock because you know what the Bible says? It says God will fight for me and I will hold my peace. I don't need to lift a finger. God will fight for me. Hallelujah. That's why I love that Mount Zion movie. Um, what, what's that, the name of that recent movie again? And, and you know when um, that mic will be shouting, Olubi Jami. Yeah, Abba Joey, thank you. Olubi Jami. I mean, it, it's such a revelation to have. That's why as believers, we cannot be vindictive. We cannot, be, we cannot be people that think about um, I must take revenge. A believer cannot be vindictive. Do you understand? It might look as though you are being cheated, but God is up to something. Are you following what I'm saying here? God is up to something. He's on your side. He's with you as a mighty, terrible one. Just allow it. Let it go. Because many times, when, when it seems like the enemy is winning, God is about to give a technical knockout. Hallelujah. The Bible says, if the prince of this world had known, he would not have crucified the king of glory. In other words, sometimes when it seems like Satan is actually winning, what is happening is that it's actually, it's actually playing into God's plan for your life. As an undergraduate in Ninth Century Abuja, there was a testimony about one of our senior friends. She was way more senior to me. I think I was probably in my first year when she was graduating. And when she graduated, she had an extra. Somehow, 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 a lecturer stood up, frustrated that she could not graduate with her mates. She had to do an extra year. And while she was complaining and praying and saying, Lord, what's the meaning of this? And the Lord said, take that extra year for my purpose. 
Glory to Jesus. I took the extra year. The entire extra year, nothing happened. It was dry. She didn't understand how God would say that she should take an extra year for his purpose and yet nothing seemed to happen in the extra. She finished and went to serve. Glory to Jesus. When she went to serve, it was in her service year she met a beautiful, let me use the word, beautiful young man that is today her husband and the lead pastor of a church. Someone say hey, she could have met him if she served earlier. Interestingly, the young man came into the city, all right, the year she went to serve. So the church was about a year old. Do you, do you get the point? So if she had gone to serve and he happened to even be in the same city at the time she was supposed to go, he would not have been there. I mean, I mean that marriage is almost um, 10, 15 years now. They are doing amazingly well for the Lord. The glory to Jesus. So you see, even though you might not understand, you must continually have a posture and have a revelation that God's with me. Jonathan Bynum sang that song. He says, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting for you, Lord. It means that even if I don't understand what is going on, I trust the judgment of the Lord. And I know that he's fighting for me. God is always for you. He's never against you. And the Bible says, if God be for me, who can be against me? What can be against me? Isaiah chapter 50 verse 7 says, the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I shall not be confounded. Look at that. The Lord God will help me and I shall not be confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint and I know that I shall not be ashamed. Listen, people of God, even at quarter to shame, God will show up for you. Mm, it doesn't matter if it's a narrow or wide escape. The point is that we're going to escape. Glory to Jesus. It doesn't matter. The whole world can come crashing down. I'm certain that I'm going to escape. The Bible says that God shall make a way of escape. Glory to Jesus. The Lord will help me. Therefore shall I not be put to shame. Therefore I have set my face like a flint. And I know that I shall not be ashamed. Glory to Jesus. That's a glory place actually. Glory! Woo! I shall not be ashamed. Oh, stop your neighbor a high five. Say, neighbor, I shall not be ashamed. Glory to God. Listen, people of God. Look at what the Bible says in this Isaiah 57. It says, I have set my face like a flint. You know what it means? I have become stone cold. I may remember that wrestler, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I don't talk stone cold. I be wrong. You know, almost expressionless. That this thing, I'll come out on the other side. Because the Bible says, surely there's an end. The expectation of the righteous is not cut off. I may not know the process, but I know the end. I may, not, I may not be exact about the process, but I know the end. And even that process, even if it's not palatable, God is using to work patience in me. Hallelujah. He's using to work experience in me. He's using it to work character in me. He's using it to work hope in me. And bless God, hope cannot be made ashamed. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah 54 verse 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither shalt thou be confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. Promises and promises again of God's help and divine intervention, guaranteeing the fact that we will not be put to shame. I don't know why God put this in my heart, but you will not be put to shame. I said you will not be put to shame. You are going to laugh and laugh last. And you're going to laugh and laugh hard. In the name of Jesus. Psalm says, why do the hidden rage? Why do the kings of this world conspire together against the Lord and against the anointed? He says, behold, he that sits in heaven shall laugh. It's the people of God. Sometimes when you are faced with diverse situations, wake up in the middle of the night and laugh. Oh, there's such a thing as laughing in the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you may not start off in the spirit, start in the flesh. The Holy Ghost will catch up. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Praise God forevermore. They say you, you've got to pay this bill. Oh, you've got to turn in this, this proposal. You've got to turn in this. And you are, everything seems to be against you. Wake up in the night. Open your bank up. Glory to Jesus. And laugh. <laughs> you know something? You mean like you are crazy. I mean, I, I did this a lot. Glory to Jesus. I remember when we prayed for the wedding. <laughs> you know when you are in a point of when they say you are in Shingbai don't have your people in the house you know when you have a project running up, up to a million millions of dollars and you are in Shingbai and you are like, like should we postpone and say no we are doing it 
and then you wake up in the middle of the night, open the Digi Bank app, and it's six naira seventy five kobo. I had <laughs> Go away! <sighs> this guy mad. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'm a man of the spirit. Glory to Jesus. There's a way we win. There's a way we win. Oh, when everyone says there's a casting down, our testimony will be that there's a lifting up. When everyone is saying there's a casting down, our confession is that we will lift them up. I'm the answer. I'm the answer to the outcry of my generation for God. When my generation is looking for God, I will show up. That must be your consistent belief because there's a promise of help. Hallelujah. There's a promise of help. There's a promise of divine intervention. Psalm 20 verse 6 says, Now I know that the Lord saveth is anointed. Say the Lord saveth is anointed. The Lord saves his anointed. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven and with the saving strength of his right hand. Wow. Did you see that? The Lord is the one that saves his anointed. And when I say the Lord is saves his anointed, the Bible says, Talk not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. You are God's anointed. Everyone who is saved, sanctified by the precious of the Spirit, is the anointed of the Lord. He says, now the Lord saves his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Glory to Jesus. These are promises in the Old Testament about God's help, divine interventions in our lives as his people. And we read in John chapter 14, verse 16 to 18. Let's read it again. Glory to Jesus. John 14 verse 16 to 18. I just want to show us one or two things in that scriptures and begin to wrap up tonight. It's even shorter than I thought it would be. Amen. Alright. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Forever. I'm going to talk about this soon. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Amen. 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 This is beautiful. Amen. You know what the Bible calls the Holy Ghost? It calls him our ever present hell even in time of need you see the spirit of god is not a fear weather friend god is not fear weather do you know do you know what i mean by fear weather god is not with you when things are good and runs away from you when things seem like they are not good it's with you in every season it's with you in every moment hallelujah Wait, even when you wrote that exam that seems like you didn't do well God is with you hallelujah oh, it seems that like you didn't write you man you know that you didn't write itself but God says I'm with you he says I'm with you glory to Jesus he says I'm with you hallelujah so the Bible says that we have a very present help the Holy Ghost who abides with us forever now the word comfortless in verse 19 is it verse 18 now the word comfortless in verse 18 is actually the word in the greek orphanos what the bible says here is that god says i will not leave you like orphans i will not leave you as orphans i will not leave you without help i will not leave you without help i will not leave you without help the father has not left us without help he has not left us to roam the world as orphans we have a father he's a present father he's not a distant father he's not an absent father our heavenly father is a present father glory to jesus is present with us in every situation and his mighty outstretched arm is bringing us help from zion in the name of jesus Psalm 46 verse 1 refers to the Lord as our very present help even in the time of need. Let's read Matthew chapter 8 verse 2 to 3 as it shows us the character and the nature of God revealing his predisposition to always helping the believer. Matthew chapter 8 verse 2 to 3 reveals the character of God and his predisposition to always helping the believer. This is the nature of our Heavenly Father is ever present with us. 
Say, God is ever present with me. Oh, come on, say it like you believe it. Say, God is ever present with me. God is ever present with me. God is ever present helping me. Hallelujah. Look at verse 2 of Matthew chapter 8 and into verse 3. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou will, thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. That, that, that's some deep stuff right there. And Jesus put forth his arm and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately, some say immediately. Some say immediately. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. The three things I want to quickly show us in that portion of scripture. The leper came to Jesus and said, if you will, that is, if you desire, I know that your capacity is not in doubt. I know that if you want to do it, you will do it. It says, if you will, you can make me clean. I know what Jesus answered. He says, I will. Someone say, I will. The Father's heart towards you at every time you need his help is, I will. He can and he will. Oh, are you following what I'm talking to you about tonight? I said, he can and he will. 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 Go away! Woo! Makabarataska parandes. Oh, can this cancer leave my body? He can, he will, and he is right now. In the name of Jesus. I cause every growth, fibroid, cancer, ovarian cyst, wherever you're connected from right now, I cause it to its root. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I cause every disease in the bloodstream, HIV, hepatitis, whatever name that is called, in the name of Jesus, be gone forever, be gone forever, in the name of Jesus. Oh, rata pina manto sko prege de le boko bahas. Erana na manto su brega di ande le de boko sataba. There's somebody watching this broadcast right now. Makato ski brege de ekete skaba. I break the yoke of stagnancy in your life. Five years a graduate, no job. Now, in the name of Jesus, let the oil of favor begin to work in your affairs. In the name of Jesus, the Lord brings you help from Zion. The Lord brings you help from Zion, and your face is becoming radiant. You are not put to shame in the name of Jesus oh thank you father it says I can and I will oh I can and I will it doesn't matter what your own peculiar situation is God says I will are you following me tonight God says I will Oh, is it a career need God says I will is it a financial need God says I will oh God lift up your right hand where you are say Lord I trust your wisdom I trust your capacity I trust your heart towards me oh for you can and you will oh for you can and you will oh you can and you will 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 thank you father you're such a gracious good father you can and you will 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 hallelujah praise god forevermore and the bible says in that verse Three, this guy was a leper. This guy was stricken with leprosy. And by default, normal people don't touch lepers. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? Jesus could have just said, Go. You know, the other time some 10 lepers came to meet Jesus, he said, Go wash yourself in the river. But Jesus, in Matthew 8, the Bible says, He touched him. It means that Jesus identifies with you. In every situation he identifies with you in your weakness he identifies with you in the downwest moment of your life he identifies with you what am I preaching to tonight it doesn't matter how far gone you are God identifies with you in that situation and his redeeming love is bringing you back his redeeming love is bringing you out he says the Bible said Jesus touched the leper mm. Oh, Shanamanto Kobarataya. 
Jesus, the Bible says we have not an high priest who cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmity. Mm, I feel it there. <laughs> hey, we have an high priest, and this high priest can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. This is our high priest. He doesn't live in exclusive quarters. He identifies with us in our pain. He identifies with us in our need. He identifies with us in our situationships. He identifies with us in every point of need that we might find ourselves. Hallelujah. Our father is not elitist. Are you following me tonight? Our father is not elitist. It's not don't come near me. The Bible says you don't even need to come near. He will draw near unto you. The Bible records the story of the prodigal son. He says while he was yet afar off, the father ran towards him. Before you take one step close to God, he has taken ten closer to you. I don't know where you are right now. Is it a moral failure issue? Come back. The Lord restores you. Maybe you've made a mistake people may not forgive you but God can and he will matter of fact he has are you following what I'm talking to you about tonight is it a moral failure the redeeming love of God is available is it a character flaw the power of God is available and you are standing back on your feet for the Bible says that the righteous may fall ten, seven times but yet again it will rise yet again it will rise who am I preaching to tonight you are rising again you are finding your feet again God is restoring your fire you are experiencing personal revival in the name of Jesus the Bible says he touched him. oh our high priest can be touched he can be touched by the feelings of our infirmities dear child of God come back home what am I preaching to tonight? Come back home. Come back home. Come back home. The Father's warm embrace awaits you. His embrace is purifying. Oh, Paranakataskapaya. His embrace brings restoration, brings healing and deliverance. Come back to your dear Father's waiting arms. Glory to God. The Bible says Jesus put his hand upon the leper. He puts his hand upon the leper. He's not elitist. He's not running away from you. Glory to God. You know, one of the things that amazes me about the man Jesus is that he doesn't, he doesn't have a due protocol. You can assess him. Hallelujah. You have access by faith into the grace. When we now stand, Romans chapter 5. By him, we have access by faith into the grace wherein we now stand. We have access to him hallelujah and as much as we have access to him he's always reaching out to you hallelujah oh glory to god you know there's that song oh, forgive my bad voice um reaches to me can you can you help me with the song do you know the song how about i forgetting that song it's just it talks about the fact that the goodness of god reaches out to me. please can you sing it loud yeah, you are my strength, strength like no other. Reaches. You know, God is always reaching. Hallelujah. He's always reaching. He's always reaching. He's, he, he wants to touch you. Ha ha ha. Can you play that? He touched me. And oh, what joy that fills my soul. Something happen oh he touched me and made me whole forgive my bad voice but when god touches you he makes you whole the bible says that just keep playing on that song that he touched this leper and the bible says instantaneously he was cleansed of his leprosy what area of your life do you need cleansing tonight what area of your life do you need divine intervention tonight career academics marriage finances relationships ministry you need a touch from heaven god is touching that area of your life in the name of the lord jesus god is bringing divine intervention your way in your career in the name of jesus in your academics is bringing it your way in your finance in your health in your ministry every area of your life you're experiencing divine intervention now in the name of jesus 
there are a lot of ways that God brings intervention as people I call these things agencies for divine help hallelujah one of the ways God brings intervention is people to his people is through the word hallelujah so we say help through the word help through the word of God so when you see the, the word it becomes a reality hallelujah one of the other ways God brings intervention is help through the ministry of angels and I pray for you right now may you begin to experience angelic interventions in every area of your life in the name of the Lord Jesus another way that God helps his people is that he brings help through men through strategic associations hallelujah oh may the book of remembrance be opened unto you may men in sensitive quarters remember you for good in the name of the Lord Jesus and also God brings help to his own through the anointed hallelujah when the anointed word of God is spoken over you things begin to change the boundary lines begin to fall onto you in pleasant places and tonight as we have learned about the ministry of God's help and divine intervention to us in every area of your life when you need help may help come to you from Zion in the name of the Lord Jesus I declare to you that to, by the reason of the anointing in this service tonight you are coming back with your own testimony testimony of God's goodness testimonies of God's intervention testimonies of God's rulership in your affairs in the name of the Lord Jesus I declare unto you begin to experience the goodness of God begin to experience the goodness of God in the name of Jesus Father we thank you we give you the praise and glory in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen. Hallelujah. I've been blessed tonight. Stop in about high five. Say, I have been blessed. Glory to Jesus. So next week, Sunday, 7 p.m. will be with you again. Um, you want to give um the account details for the ministry will be somewhere on your screen right now. And you can give and be a part of what God is doing. So we'll see you again same time next week. God bless you.